Now I want to go through a couple of examples with an uneven cash flow stream. First thing we're going to do is net present value. Then we're going to use the internal rate of return. And then our last problem is not a cash flow stream problem, but something we call effective annual interest rates. Let's start with the first example. You are offered an investment that will pay you $2,000 per year for the next three years, then $4,000 per year for the five years after that. Assuming you want to earn a 7% rate of return on your investment, how much would you be willing to pay? Now what makes this problem a little more complicated is at first glance it looks somewhat like an annuity in that you see the per year, 2000 per year, but it's not the same cash flow stream over the entire period. We have 2000 per year for three years and then 4000 per year for five years. Because the cash flow changes, it's not an annuity. We only have an annuity when we have the same periodic cash flow over the entire time period. Instead what we have here is something called an uneven cash flow stream. Now sometimes when you're dealing with uneven cash flow streams it might help to use a timeline so you can visualize what's going on. So here we have a timeline starting at year zero. Notice there's no cash flow in year zero. Then we're going to receive two thousand dollars one year from today. The space represents the year so the hash mark represents the end of the first year. Two years from today we'll receive another 2000. Three years we'll receive another 2000. And the cash flow will jump to 4000. Years 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 we're going to receive 4000 per year. So we have three years of 2000 and then five years of 4000 per year. We want to figure out what those are worth today. We want to calculate the present value. So we go to our financial calculator. And the first thing that we recognize is we're going to be using our cash flow worksheet. Now one problem with the cash flow worksheet is that it keeps old problems in there until we clear them out. So if we'd done a problem previously, those cash flows would still be in our worksheet. Because of that, whenever you start a cash flow worksheet problem, the first thing you want to do is clear out anything that's in the cash flow worksheet from previously. To do that, do shift clear all. That clears out our worksheet, so now we're starting from scratch. And now we want to put in the cash flows. Our first cash flow is year zero. Remember, there's no cash flow in year zero, so we're going to tell the calculator exactly that. Zero. We use the CFJ button to enter our cash flow, so when we press CFJ, you can see it says CF0. It's recording that zero for our initial cash flow. Our next cash flow is $2,000. So now we press 2000 Again, press the cash flow button and it tells us that the first cash flow is 2000 Now we have this cash flow for one, two, three periods. Instead of entering that separately, we're going to tell the calculator that we have a frequency of three. We do that with this N sub J button. Notice that's a shift, so we have to do three, shift, N sub J. Now, can move on to the next cash flow. The next cash flow is 4,000. So we do 4,000 CFJ. And now notice here it says CF2. Confusing part is you might think that's trying to tell you that it's the second cash flow in year two, but instead it's saying that's the second cash flow sequence into our cash flow stream. So the first sequence was the 2,000 per year for three years. The next sequence is going to be this 4,000 per year for five years. So the calculator knows that cash flow is in year four, even though it said two, because the two just represents the second sequence. We have one, two, three, four, five cash flows. So five, shift, and sub J. Now we've put in all our cash flows. We need to tell the calculator what discount rate we're using. We've got a 7% rate of return. So 7 is our interest rate. 
and now we can calculate the net present value. That's a shift function, so we do shift NPV and we find out that this cash flow stream is worth $18,636.56. If somebody offered us this investment opportunity for $18,000, we would accept it because it's worth more than $18,000 to us. On the other hand, if somebody offered us this investment opportunity for $19,000, we would turn it down because it's only worth $18,600. It's not worth $19,000. So once we know the present value, then we can decide whether or not that investment is worthwhile. If it costs us less than the present value, then we should accept the investment. If it's going to cost us more than the present value, then we would reject the investment. In addition to finding the present value, we can also figure out what rate of return we're making on an investment. So this next problem, we're offered an investment that will pay us $1,000 one year from today, $2,000 two years from today, and $3,000 per year for the following three years, which would be years three, four, and five. You can purchase this investment for $6,500. What rate of return are you anticipating? So our cash flow stream looks like this. We're going to spend $6,500 today. Note that that's a negative. That's an outgoing cash flow. We're spending that. It's in year zero. In year one, we get $1,000. In year two, we get $2,000. In year three, four, and five, we get $3,000 per year. We want to know our rate of return we're calculating the internal rate of return. So we go to our financial calculator. Again, we're going to be using our cash flow worksheet. We want to clear out the, pre the previous problem. So shift, clear all. Now our cash flow worksheet is empty. We start with our year zero cash flow. Remember, that's our 6,500 that we're spending. So we make 6,500 make it negative using our plus minus and press CFJ. That puts it into our CF0, our initial cash flow. Next we have a cash flow of $1,000. That's our year one cash flow. Press that in. Next we have a cash flow of $2,000. Push that in. Now notice I did not use my N sub J key here. I didn't do the shift and tell it the frequency. The reason is it assumes a default of one. If you don't tell it otherwise, it assumes each cash flow only occurs one time. So our 1,000 and 2,000 only occurred once. That was the calculator's default setting. We don't have to tell it otherwise. But when we get to our next cash flow, we can see that 3,000 occurs three times. So now we're going to have to use our N sub J. First, put in the 3,000 cash flow and now three for years three, four, and five, shift and sub j. Now all our cash flows are into the calculator. We want to calculate the internal rate of return. That's a shift. So we do shift, internal rate of return, and we find out we're going to earn 20.65 percent rate of return on this investment.